May you find happiness and peace. And may your home stand the test of time. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary today. I'll be reacting to another video from Charlie Keck. Today's video is titled Charlie Keck Destroy Leftist Groomer Teacher. So without further ado, let's get started. As a parent yourself, what would you say to maybe a teacher who's pushing this agenda on to students, maybe even your daughter one day? Yeah, that person is a groomer who um, is a pervert and should not be in teaching to use their position in education to put forward radical, baseless, perverse gender queer theory on a five, six, or seven, or eight-year-old. Um, that, that, is, that is a, I mean, I used the right descriptions, right, when I said that. Not only does it have no place in education, the implications of that are quite obvious. And evidence after evidence after evidence is surfacing of parents telling kids not to, I'm sorry, teachers telling parents, teachers telling kids not to tell their parents, right? Teachers coming in and saying, you know, do not repeat this. And if we're at a place in society where we can't remove pornographic images from kids' textbooks, then we got a serious problem. And that's where we're at. I mean, if you're, if you're at seven, eight, or nine years old and you have this graphic, graphic teaching, it, it really is, it shows a broader sickness. Why, though? Why, why, why? Well, it's because the innocence of children is worthy of being protected and preserved. It's a moral good. The innocence of children is very important because they never get it back. And that period of childhood development where they're, quote, unquote, as innocent as they can be is important for them to find out their values, to grow close to their parents, find out what's right and wrong. You know what ends up happening? when the innocence of children is robbed, they're less likely to take risks and fail and learn who they are. Every study shows this. When a child's innocence is quote unquote robbed, you could use whatever graphic example you could imagine, then all of a sudden are they, are they gonna be as likely to, you know, there's a great, there's an old Hebrew proverb which is um, someone who's afraid of being embarrassed will never learn. It's a great Hebrew proverb, isn't I it? I love that. Which is, they're going to be less likely to ask, quote unquote, the dumb question, maybe more likely to be in their shell. I think there's something really fun and exciting of a five, six or seven year old that asks the wackiest questions you could imagine because they're trying to explore truth. And we want to destroy that. You never get that back. Once it's gone, there is no reversing it. And I think that's a very special thing. I think every, you know, the kind of the beauty of what the West has been able to do is saying that those of us that are older and those of us that have some form of strength need to use that strength. I mean, strength more collectively, not physical strength. Use that to protect children that can't protect themselves. And then once they become to an age of informed consent, we basically have that age around 18, then obviously they can you know, make more decisions themselves. But we're not even talking about 18. We're not even talking about 14. We're not talking about 12. We're talking about five, six, and seven-year-olds. We're talking about the most moldable, impressionable ages imaginable. I, I love this. You know, whatever you do, let's try to protect our children because they are the leaders of tomorrow. So the more we protect them, the more we, we build a better future. Because I, I, I would not advise parents allowing their children to be exposed to things that they are too young to see. So at least we, we need to give them that room to grow, to enjoy their, 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 their you know, youthful age before introducing them to what the world looks like. You see, a child can walk up to you today and tell you that, um, Dad, I need money for this. Even if you don't have that money, you have to get it. Especially when they think consign his education. Because you know, it's a priority that the child needs it. You're not going to tell the child, Oh, I don't have money, don't worry, I, I, I'm not able to provide for you. No, you have to, you know, do things for them. You know, try to hide the aspect of life so that, you know, they don't get introduced to that at a very tender age. They see you as superhero they see you as the richest man on earth that is how our children see us so why then do we allow them to get introduced to certain things to certain image like before they are they are due you know i saw a video of um, a lady that has, that started taking um this puberty drugs you know to to prevent your puberty at the age of 11 she started taking it or he started taking it and i felt like nah this child, these children need to be old enough, you know, to, to take such decision, you know. And I, I feel like governments have the right to give that drugs to anyone, you know. As far as you are willing to take it, they will give it to you without your parents' consent. And I, I think it's very, very wrong. If that child cannot cater for their self, cannot cater for their education, cannot cater for their feeding, then the parents have the final say to decide what and what their children can do. 
anyway, I, I love this and I, I love the fact that Charlie is advocating for all parents out there. And I think he's a father too. So he, he don't want his child to be in a world whereby they won't or there will be a danger. So he wants the child to be in a world where they will be free to be children. That is it, you know, let them let them grow, let them experience that youthful age. Let them let them have that let them experience that adolescent, that puberty. Let them be able to like have a taste of it because we also we had that, that privilege, you know. I think way back when I was um thirteen I started my puberty journey. It wasn't an easy journey though. I started experiencing changes. But I'm super excited that I was opportune, you know, I had the opportunity to experience such changes. And there are so many things I wasn't introduced to till I was 18. And I, I thank God for that because in like as mean I was introduced to those things, it would it would have changed the course of my life, you know. Because sometimes I'll I would do some certain things, my mom would tell me, You will understand when you get older. I'll feel like then I'll feel like, oh, I understand. Why are you making me feel like this? But if I look back, I'll, I'll see the reason why my mom was telling me that, you know, I feel like, yes, I think this is the reason why she was telling me because, you know, I took some decisions because of how I, how I reasoned back then. So now I'm getting, I'm a bit wiser because life has taught me a lot. So now I, I can look back and say, yes, I think my mom was right. This is the reason why she was preventing me from doing this. And I think our children have the right, need to have the right to experience that too. So let's not take that right from them. Anyway, this is a brief one. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If it's your first time visiting the channel, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and remember this.